Hello, this is Carl McDermott, Global Head of Business to Mellon from Office Network. You know, I think everyone's seen a graph like this before. You know, global exports have quadrupled over the last 25 years. Obviously, we had a, a couple of hiccups uh, around, you know, the financial crisis 2008 and obviously the China-US trade wars in 2015. And a lot of that trade growth was really through um, what we call these trading blocks, right? So you can see here um, one that's you know very dear to our heart, which is the new USMCA, obviously the European Union. Um, and that led purchasing mine managers to try to produce goods, um, you know, or components in a supply chain perspective in the cheapest in the cheapest country, taking advantage of some of those free trade agreements. And, you know, that that could have caused that, you know, saving money uh, or going for the lowest cost was diametrically opposed to sustainability. And I think then obviously no one was really expecting this black swan event COVID and no one's really then fully got to grips of the, you know, the, the changes that we have to build into our supply chain using some of these emerging technologies to de-risk the, the, the supply chain, make it more resilient, make it more reliable. You know, it's no longer about the cheapest cost and also make it more sustainable. You know, we believe in Morpheus Network that actually digitization and sustainability can be a common goal. They're not diametrically opposed. So typically what you see out in supply chain, where you see a lot of manual documents, a lot of data and event silos, tools like email with multiple compute and storage costs. OK, so it, it goes back to, you know, some of the the, the, the comments that um, Dr. Goldstrom was making around, you know, data quality, about, you know, having a, a, a good flow within the, the business process, that 2B process. OK, so that's one area of opportunity. We can help a lot with tools like blockchain. Another then is to get more credible metrics. So again, one of the big problems, are, you know, COVID was, you know, you heard about those, you know, auto OEMs, you know, the auto manufacturers having to shutter plants around the world in late February because they couldn't get parts out of, you know, China and South Korea. So we've got huge dependencies that we need to like systemically eliminate from, from supply chains. And that will give you much better inventory in ETA. And obviously this trickle on benefits there in terms of sustainability. No longer do we need to air freight, you know, goods around the world, which is very, not only very expensive, but has a huge carbon footprint if we plan better our ETA. And finally, you know, they, we see in supply chain all these unconnected platforms. In fact, you know, if you've, you're a complex supply chain, you might have 80% of your operation, 80% of your supply chain in the hands of your, your stakeholders. So they could be, you know, your tier three suppliers going to tier two, to tier one, all the, the connecting dots through the supply chain and then, you know, into the retail network. And, you know, obviously that had a lot of challenges then, you know, again, we saw this very evidently with COVID around, you know, how do we connect those signals together? So that, that's really what's out there. Now, how do we frame this in, in with SDC? So what I'm gonna do here is then see how we can move or show that the platform and how we might use a practical case to actually you know, show you some of the benefits of these emerging technologies and how we might achieve some of those um, SDC goals. Okay, so here's a shipment. Actually, it's a shipment of tequila and wine coming from Mexico. I live in Mexico, so it's uh, obviously a product in a country dear to my heart and they're going to the US. And again, you know, this information, you know, I, I wouldn't be re this. I would connect to the system of record, the SAP, basically to pull all this information automatically. Okay, so I populate what we have here as a purchase order. Okay, and that purchase order then will then trickle into what we call a workflow. So on the right hand side here, you see a series of modules. So we, we're connected on our platform to 100 global carriers like DHL you know, to several IOT providers, okay? We create and, and use, obviously, you know, we can send emails, document documents, we collect documents from the platform, we work with, with IOT providers. And it's, it's really simple then for us to like drag and drop and build a workflow that's going from one country, let's say Mexico in this case, to the United States. Now, what, what does that workflow usually entail? Well, you know, one of the challenges of digitization is eliminating all that dependency on email. So, you know, we, we like to go and request documents. This is, um, you know, the packing list and warehouse documents, either from people, from, from entities in the organization, but we can also request those now through APIs. 
So no longer we're using email to shunt them backwards and forwards. And again, that, that saves time and produces um, better transparency and better quality documents for a workflow. Now we can also request trucking assets or, or logistics assets like containers, okay? We also include IoT within a workflow. So, you know, here you're using blockchain and IoT together. So, you know, some of the IoT manufacturers we work with, you know, this is called CanCar, but we also look at Telefonica, AT&T. We can pull off, you know, information like temperature, humidity, geolocation, shock, you know, drop and light. And again, why is this important? So if we were looking at geolocation, we want to know all those handling points and send out automatic notifications. Again, we're trying to, you know, streamline the process uh, and when we clear customs, when we've, you know, arrived to the DC. If it's temperature, so if this was a, a spirits and wine sh shipment, um, obviously what you'd need to have a look at would be cold chain. So normally that would be from one to, or, or zero to eight degrees. And, and here we're using then IoT with blockchain to, to manage what we call these brand or pr product protection events. So if it's wine, you can't have the temperature over eight degrees or 10 degrees. You can't have immunity over like 60% because labels peel off. If it's good wine, you wanna keep it, you know, rotated at 90 degrees um, to stop the cork drying out. So that, again, this, there's a lot of use cases for IoT and blockchain uh, in terms of giving you product and brand protection, okay? We also have some specific modules. This would be the import. So here we're actually talking to the US Customs and Border Protection um, ACE platform automatically on our platform. So again, you, know, you don't need to be calling up your broker to understand when you've actually cleared. And then all of our supply chain shipments, you usually, you know, they usually start with a purchase order and end with a proof of delivery. So this is where supply chain usually ends and where other processes such as merchanding usually start. And obviously we, we, we execute this workflow on different blockchains. So our platform is completely blockchain agnostic. So, you know, we, we started our business journey using Ethereum, but we've then also ported to applications to, you know, solutions like Hyperledger, which is more of a private, a permission blockchain rather than Ethereum, which is public. Okay, so what happens when we kick off a workflow? Well, you know, let me just go to here. Okay, so you know we we can actually then see the documents with, that you need to be uploaded, the very clear jobs to be done. Okay, those get uploaded to the platform, and we post those to something called a digital footprint. So the digital footprint is our notary service that allows um, someone to trace uh, a a shipment from beginning to end. So here's our purchase order, um, but you know if it if it's agri food, you might have to show you know some ISO documentation, right? the nutritional information, okay? There's the insurance for tequila. And the key thing here is the product packaging. These documents are actually on blockchain. So we're using blockchain to store these documents once and then share them across multiple workflows uh, and, and then automatically because they're, you know, it's a hash document with other entities, other stakeholders. So we're not using multiple copies of the document. We're using one version of the truth to basically drive the whole supply chain process. So here you see the interactions we have with our carriers. And again, you know, coming from Mexico, here's the registry of the trucking company used with the trucking ministry in Mexico. Again, we put this on blockchain once and it's available then um, not only for the customs authorities, um, the customs broker, but you know, any regulatory people that need to look at it like, again, customs and border protection. And we can go down obviously to a very granular level. You know, here's the driver that moved the goods. Okay, and here's the VIN number of the, of the truck. So this is what we call a digital footprint. And I could zoom in here on the actual map and you can see then that in this particular case, sorry for, let me make that slightly bigger so you can see it. Um, the initial order was actually created in Mexico City. Um, it was the truck shipment started from Monterey where I live. And then you can see obviously all the data points we're picking off you know, from that IoT shipment, storing on blockchain and making it actionable. Again, we talked a little bit about smart contracts. So if there was a temperature issue here, we could use a smart contract to decide who was at fault, if it was a problem with the reefer of the truck to keep the temperature cold, and then decide on the insurance policies and apply those, those rules of the, the, the insurance policy over a smart contract. So that's where you see, again, IoT, um, blockchain, and transparency and then smart contracts, which is the action all working together. Okay, 
Um, I just wanted to show you another common uh, example. So again, this is quite topical. Here's a shipment of tomatoes going from Holland to the United Kingdom. Uh, and obviously this was air freighter because um, if you've heard the news recently, all the ports from Rotterdam and the port in, in Felixstowe are all full of like um, of products and containers, which makes it very difficult to ship into. So this was air freighter, which obviously has you know some big issues again around sustainability. These are the kinds of things that we want to make clear, transparent and avoid if we're trying to build safe and secure supply chains that are also sustainable, okay? Um, so a couple of more, a couple of quick things that I wanted to show you. So every step of that process, I'm just gonna change browser here, um, is actually then pushed out to what we call, you know, you know the data analytics tools. So we could use MR, we could use M, uh, uh, ML, we could use AI to kind of process transactions, look at those more realistic times of arrivals. But you can see here, this is like Power BI, uh, and you can see every process step, you know, when it actually happened, how long it took, you know, what's the percentage of advance with that particular shipment. Um, we also have a, a fully functional tool that allows you to see all the documents that have been uploaded. Again, the documents could be coming from external systems, uh, or they could be coming from from people. Um, so, you know, it could be actually veterinary certificates, you know, from if it's an agri food like, um, you know, states or something in the in the food sector. And again, it allows me very simply to look at those documents on blockchain. OK, so you can see here, this is my my testing certificate. OK, for global food standard for safety, GFSI. OK, uh, to prove that that company has a GFSI certificate for the, for this shipment. OK, so I just wanted to show you one last thing here on on blockchain and then we will just finish the this quick demo of the platform. Um, so here we are in a, a part of the tool which works around fraud protection. So fraud protection, I think, again, as, as, as Dr. Goldstrom mentioned, you know, critical right now with vaccines. You know, maybe in some of the developing developed worlds, you know, you're going to be sure that you're getting the original vice of actins. But 40 percent of pharma in developing countries is often um, counterfeit. So, you know, we could use that platform to tracking that. Uh, or we could use it for, you know, tracking or using it for traceability of inbound raw materials or actual products. So, you know, here is the actual QR code for some coffee. This is coffee coming out of Uganda. Uh, this is a specific type. This is Robusta Screen 12. And, and this is obviously serialized. So this is unique for this particular bag. So again, if, if this arrived in, in a Walmart, as, as again, Dr. Goldstrom has mentioned, we'd know exactly when it was produced, which farm it was produced, what was the lot date, how it was packaged and processed. And then again, that's benefits because we put some of that information on blockchain. So just to finish this presentation, and then I'll ask if there's any questions, I want to just take you through some of the, the benefits of a platform like ours, and then how we can really dial into the sustainability side. So, you know, at the benefits of a platform like Morpheus are really around, you know, reducing OPEX. So it's that P&L. It's how do you give right visibility, you know, reducing those compliance issues, making sure you've got the right documents, because having the wrong documents is the principal reason the products get stopped in ports. OK, and you end up paying fines to Murich, you know, you lose shelf life, you know, some some big business issues there. You know, the other angle is working capital. So you, on the inbound, that could be, you know, real time inventory using IoT, reliable ETAs using ML and AI. Uh, will improve your accounts receivables. And then obviously reliable ETA includes plant planning on inbound shipments. Uh, and obviously then we've got some specific goals around compliance. It could be security based like CTPAT and sustainability. But then remember part of what we're trying to solve here is not just provide business benefits, not just to simplify or optimize the supply chains. We also want to provide benefits um, across the board in terms of sustainability. So. You know, if you were looking for the circular supply chain, you might see benefits on the inbound for shippers, traceability of raw materials, parts and components, and all the effort in those production and logistics processes. You know, if it's manufacturing or operations, it could be reliable times of arrival, you know, reducing waste, you know, making sure that you're getting product just at the right time. And that will obviously help P&L on the balance sheet at the same time. On outbound, it's like making sure that, uh, you know, real-time inventory using IoT, those reliable, you know, ETAs um, are 
avoiding any of those overcosts that I mentioned. And finally, you know, we can talk about how we recycle and reuse. So, you know, how we take products, waste products, you know, from, you know, that's already been consumed and then, you know, use some of the component parts or some of the product to turn them into, you know, you know, raw materials for the next cycle. You know, so plastics could be a good case there. How do we recycle plastics? How do we recycle some, some metals so that they're actually being reused? You know, and then obviously we can push that information out to, you know, to uh, ledgers on blockchain, for example, to have very clear uh, recordings of those sustainability sustainability commitments. So I don't know how I'm doing for time. Um, just let me know if uh, keep, I've got a couple going, of minutes. Keep going, I want to learn more. Okay. <laughs> <Don't tell> me. <laughs> okay, great. So I just wanted to take you through a couple of customer cases, though. So, uh, here we have um, Federated Carp. So this is what's the one of the biggest um, retailers in Canada, the $8 billion company. And what we did with Federated Co-op was implement the Safe Food for Canada Act. So the challenge there is that the, this, this new piece of legislation that came into play at the beginning of last year, 2020, just before the pandemic, uh, is to ensure that your suppliers in this place, 150 global suppliers, have the most up-to-date um, food safety documenters. So you saw an example there, you know, the GFSI, my, you know, the Global Food Safety Initiative. But there are other ones. It could be BRC, it could be ISO, it could be, um, you know, organics, US organics. So there's a series of documentation in this industry that's typically, you know, being produced manually. Some of it's actually authenticated uh, on third party websites, but it's usually being shunted around with email. So what we built is a, a food safety portal which allows FCL, Ferreta Cup, to manage this whole process. And obviously we put that on blockchain. Uh, now this was implemented in 45 days and so it's a you know it's a tool that allowed fcl to request up to six between six and ten documents from each supplier and then they get put on blockchain to be shared and some of the immediate benefits that we've seen from this was we could use these documents for helping um, unlock a product that was stuck in customs that was one and then we can share this information as an ecosystem play as a system play so that, you know, if this supplier was actually, you know, also selling to Sobe, selling to Loblos, they already have the documents, they're already on blockchain. Why don't we just create another portal that allows Sobe's to consume them? And then you're doing the job once and then using it multiple times. Again, one of the key ideas of blockchain is store it correctly once and then share that hash, that link to, to multiple participants. OK. So that's one key benefit. Um, I just wanted to talk through another one, which was um, Vital Can. So this is actually the biggest pet food company in Argentina. Um, so here we're actually tracking um, pet food. So it's like pet foods is, is controlled um, in the same way it, as like human food. So it's like there's obviously some animal protein there um, that's included in the pet food. Um, so basically there's a lot of regulation and we're using IoT and blockchain to make sure that we're tracking a whole shipment from Argentina, Buenos Aires to Chile and Santiago, making sure we've got all the right documents to clear customs in Chile. So that's another really interesting use case, you know, today of, of, of companies leveraging blockchain and IoT. And finally, this is at Maxionet. They're a company out of San Diego. They are actually a 5PL. So they help people grow their international business. And they're working with you know, some of the top, I would say, CPG companies in the food sector uh, to, to track products in, into 25 different countries. And again, they're using blockchain and IoT to do that tracking. And so that gives you like some, some background to the technology, the challenges of you know, how you can incorporate sustainability into your redesign and the digitization of supply chains. And then obviously some customer cases. And um, so that's really what I'd like to leave this. So if you'd like to get hold of me, look for me on LinkedIn uh, or reach out me through uh, Madison at a sale.